Hey guys, uh, Patrick Southern here. I'm the lead editor and producer at LumaForge. Today we're in Edit Bay A, and we're talking about Blackmagic Design's brand new codec, Blackmagic RAW. We actually are currently shooting in Blackmagic RAW on a Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, and we're shooting in one of their five new codec variables, right? So my coworker Raybar and I went out into the field and we shot a little bit of Blackmagic RAW on our own Ursa Mini Pro here in office. All it took was downloading the new firmware for the Ursa Mini Pro, and all of a sudden we had access to five new codecs, and we did a few tests out in the field, and uh, let's take a look at some of those. Blackmagic RAW, unlike ProRes RAW, has two different methods of encoding. You've got both constant bit rate encoding, and you've got constant quality encoding. What that means is if you've got a scene where maybe there's a bunch of confetti or something like that, if you're shooting at constant bit rate, the confetti appears into the scene and your bit rate stays the same, which means that all of a sudden uh, you might drop the quality of the image, right? Because you've got more detail, uh, there's not going to be any additional information to help tell you what that image is, so you're going to potentially lose quality. With constant quality codecs, on the other hand, instead of having a, a cap on the bit rate, if uh, all of a sudden there's significantly more detail in the shot, or if the colors change, or significantly more things are in focus, then the bit rate is going to go up so that you can accommodate for that new detail and retain your quality uh, within the image. So. If you're in a situation where things aren't changing a whole lot, you might go with one of the constant bitrate codecs. Uh, those are going to be your 3 to 1, your 5 to 1, your 8 to 1, and your 12 to 1. Whereas if you're going to be shooting something that fluctuates or you need ultimate quality, maybe you're shooting something that's very filmic or maybe you're shooting VFX plates for a feature film, then you're going to want to do your constant quality codecs. Instead of adopting ProRes RAW, uh, Grant Petty kind of expressed early on that he was not a big fan of ProRes RAW, he didn't think it was great. So instead, Blackmagic introduced their own version of RAW that was not Cinema DNG. For those of you who are not familiar, uh, Cinema DNG RAW is a version of RAW where uh, every single frame of video is actually a separate file. So you actually have an image sequence uh, that you try to play back in your NLE, which doesn't work very well. It's very, very slow going. Usually you have to transcode from Cinema DNG to something else to get real-time playback. So instead, with Blackmagic RAW, you can now have one single file that uh, takes advantage of the processing power of your CPU and your GPU so that it's able to play back much more quickly and efficiently than any sort of image sequence ever could. A few pluses that Blackmagic RAW has over ProRes RAW, which Apple introduced a few months ago. Number one, Blackmagic RAW, unlike ProRes RAW, gives you controls for metadata in post-production. What that means is if you shoot one exposure in the field, right? Maybe you shoot at ISO 400 in the field and you want to go to ISO 200, you can change that within DaVinci Resolve. With ProRes RAW, you can't change your ISO in post-production and you can't change things like tint or color temperature. However, with Blackmagic RAW, just like Red RAW, you can change your metadata for things like color temperature, for ISO, and so forth and so on. Something that's a little bit different about Blackmagic RAW than Red in that regard, though, is that uh, Blackmagic RAW does come with uh, baked-in metadata from the camera about how the footage was shot, and uh, you only get a sidecar file if you decide to change those settings and have those settings follow the file along. So you have the original settings always with that original file, but if you change those settings, if you want to change your ISO or change your Kelvin or change your tent, uh, then you create a new sidecar file that goes along with that file. So it doesn't overwrite the original metadata. That me original metadata is always available, but then you also have those new changed settings available to you. Another thing that Blackmagic RAW does that ProRes RAW doesn't is it does a partial debayer within the camera. What that means is that instead of waiting on your computer to do all of the processing to take uh, the red, blue, and green photo sites and combine them together into one single pixel on your computer, uh, that combination actually now partially happens in camera. The good news about that is that you're not relying on any particular piece of software to do your demosaicing, to do your debayering. 
uh, which means that you're going to have more of a consistent look coming out of the camera going into other platforms. The downside is that if any new demosaicing technology comes out in the future, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that because at least part of the demosaic has happened ahead of time. You may be able to re-demosaic portions of the image, but you're not going to be able to get back to the complete raw data, which actually brings into question whether or not Blackmagic RAW is actually raw or is it high dynamic range capture with metadata settings and controls. Another drawback to Blackmagic RAW is that it's only 12-bit color. It's limited to 12-bit. However, with Red RAW, you actually have access to 16-bit or higher. With Sony RAW, you've got access to 16-bit or higher. And with uh, ProRes RAW, there's not any limitation. Whatever the camera is capable of, that's the color depth that you'll have with your ProRes RAW footage. So there are a few drawbacks. The major benefits with Blackmagic RAW is that you're going to have a consistent experience whether you're in Final Cut, Resolve, Adobe, whatever. Right now it's only in DaVinci Resolve. Another one of the benefits that comes with Blackmagic RAW over ProRes RAW specifically is that it's completely platform agnostic. You can use it on Linux, you can use it on Windows, you can use it on Mac OS. Whereas ProRes RAW right now is limited specifically to the Mac platform. So. If you've decided to abandon the Mac platform and you're editing in DaVinci Resolve on Linux because you want to get, you know, a thousand GPUs connected to your computer for whatever reason, um, then you can make use of that with DaVinci Resolve and uh, Blackmagic RAW. Um, if you want to work on a PC platform, you can do that. If you want to work on Windows, you're you're solid, you're golden. If you want to work on Mac, you're you're good to go. Right now, the Blackmagic RAW player only works on Mac and on Windows. Maybe someday we'll see something on Linux, but if you don't have the player, you can still play back within DaVinci Resolve on Linux. So it's still early days with Blackmagic RAW. We're still going to be doing a lot of testing to see how it compares to ProRes RAW, to Red RAW, to Airy RAW, to Sony RAW. Uh, there's a lot more to be seen, but we're really excited about this new format and, and having the opportunity to test and see what is possible with Blackmagic RAW.